Well, hello, hello, my beautiful, beautiful women of the world. Welcome, welcome to our show, Your Radiant Life After 45, a show for women who are not done living yet, who want more from life, who want to um, still experience, uh, are curious to experience everything that they cannot even imagine that can be out there uh, that that is that they want to get ready for because they want to be surprised and being surprised and being um, showered with uh, beautiful things is not something that's only for the young. The older we get, um, the more gifts are actually waiting for us to be received. So that's just my... Uh, my belief, and I have seen it over and over and over again, even experienced it on myself. So welcome to um, to my show. But here is something that um, I don't do very often because very few times I have guests on my show. And when I have a guest on my show, they're always very special. So I'm so excited to introduce to you the incredible, the amazing Dr. Karen Perkins. And we know each other for maybe 10 years, something like yeah, that. About Speaking of higher, you know, we we had um, uh, we were together and then apart again and came together, but we never really totally lost sight of each other. And um, when we uh, when we reconnected lately, I didn't even know about all of the things you have been doing just lately. Um, and you will, of course, tell us more about that. You are a um, globally acclaimed coach. I knew that. And the mentor and the retreat leader. And a retreat is coming up. So you're probably going to yeah. tell us a little bit more about it. But we also want to hear about this Amazon rainforest region that you delved into the teachings of the Tachila tribe. And you are the only non-Tachilian sh shaman ordained a testament to your commitment to growth and learning. So I love that so much. And I'm so excited to hear so much about it. And you, because you will inspire others, other women, you know, over 55, over 60, it doesn't really matter. There is still something brand new that's out there for you to, uh, to embrace. Yeah? There is so much to embrace. And I definitely want to talk about um, becoming a shaman. Uh, but I want, you said something earlier about embracing life after 45. And if I might, I'd like to take a few minutes and tell you some of the things that have happened to me since I turned 45. Oh, that would be amazing. I've never had anybody say that. That's such a gift. So Thank here's some fun, fun facts. After the age of 45, I was smuggled out of Bolivia during civil unrest in the back of a Jeep with boxes and blankets thrown over us as we drove all over Molotov, whatever you call it, Molotov cocktails, the little bottles of firebomb things. So I was smuggled out of Bolivia. I helped with a water system in Peru in a small town, uh, not even a town, a little tiny community. And they loved us so much. It was so appreciative that they served us basically the last of their food. Um, they opened up a pit and put in their last few potatoes and their kui. I don't know if you've ever heard of or eaten kui. It's basically a delicacy <laughs> they're they're a little guinea pig rat that runs around in their houses and they pick them up and throw them live into the pit. So they oh, come out of the pit going oh and God. they're all hurrying. Anyway, I eat kui. So I did that after 45. After 45, I went uh, scuba diving for the first time oh. and did 17 dives before I learned how to swim. Be um, wait, wait a moment. You did scuba diving before you learned how to swim? <laughs> That's extraordinary. Darwin had been my husband. He had been diving for, uh, without exaggeration, for 50 years. And so I bought him a dive package for his birthday when we were living in Malaysia. And he says, well, I'm not going to go unless you go. 
And I said, I don't even know how to swim. He says, oh, sure you do. And I said, well, I can get from one side of the pool to the other without drowning, but that's about it. <laughs> well, he thought I was being modest. And he said, oh, you'll be just fine. And I believed him because I didn't know anything about scuba diving. And so I trusted that when he said I'd be fine, I would. And you do the first several days of training in the classroom. And then they take you on these dives that are not very deep. And you don't really have to swim or go anywhere. And the dive instructor kept looking at me funny. And and I made it. And he gave me my certificate. And so the next week, Darwin took me to Bali for a... 19 dive package um and because he'd been diving for so long it was me him and a dive master and the dive master assumed i had been diving for that long and took us on dives i had no right being on and darwin's laughing at me and he's like stop dog paddling stop dog and i'm like i don't know what you're talking about don't use your arms like that and i'm like what but it wasn't until our my 17th dive that we got caught in a current and I couldn't get through it. And so he had to grab me and pull me through the current. And we got up on top and he went, what with you? And I said, I don't know how to swim. And he went, oh. Well, at that point, we only had a few more dives left. So I might as well finish off the trip. And then we went back and he taught me how to swim with fins. So I can swim today with fins only. Since then, I've been open water certified, night dive certified, uh, shipwreck certified. Oh my um, I've since turning 40, I'm 45. Well, actually, my 59th birthday, I went skydiving. Um, you. So you do something that my daughter does. She does also <laughs> deep diving and skydiving. She says deep diving, skydiving. <laughs> and and then even in recent years, I, I've been interested in spirituality. Uh, I mean, religion's one thing, but spirituality, where you connect with the universe, where you connect with with love and, and with the vibrations and all of those things. Yeah, I love your earth care. And, right. and that is what it's yeah. all about, you yeah. know? And I have been interested in that my whole life and for the last 20 30 years I've dabbled in learning about it a little bit and that is my husband's computer he turned it off <laughs> I don't know if you can hear it ringing no, no. Uh, so anyway I I dabbled in it a little bit and was interested in it but then you know how everything starts to go great and then the world seems to fall apart. And sometimes we're in the right place at the wrong time or the wrong place at the right time, or sometimes we self-sabotage. I think I had a little bit of all three going on because <laughs> my life fell apart. And I, man, I've been teaching positivity and, and motivational speaking for well, longer than I care to admit. <laughs> well, let's see how old am I? I? I've been doing it for 35, 40 years. Um, and so, you know, I know all about positivity and gratitude and all this, but man, I got into a deep, dark, ugly funk and depression. And I mean, it was just, it was not a pretty place. And I realized nobody could fix me but me. Yeah. And I had to decide I wanted better. I wanted better for me. Yeah. And, you know, I I can go to coaches and they're awesome. And, and I found a coach and he was a shaman. And That's as we as we worked together, he he was doing coaching work itself and not the shamanic stuff. So mm -hmm. he does that as well. But mm -hmm. basically what a shaman is, is they originated, you'll hear about them all over the, the world, but most of them originated here in the Amazon rainforest area. Um, they're most widely known through Peru, Bolivia, Ecuador, you know, this, this region. Right. Um, but they're the medicine people. 
And yeah. they were the healers. They used the plant medicine. They used the earth's energy. They used um, a lot of spirituality, a lot of relying on the pull, um, the give and take of Mother Nature with the moon and the water and, and all of that. So a lot of work with the energy. Well, as we were coaching, he said, you have got some special gifts that I don't think you're aware of. And a couple of them I had come to learn I had, but I thought everybody could do it. Um, I'm claircognizant, or I'm also known as, uh, some people call it clairsentient, though they really are different. Mm -hmm. And what that is, is that I can look at people with their permission and I see what their soul wants me to see. And I don't really see it. I don't hear it. I, I just know it. Their mm. cognizant is where you just know. Their yeah. voyant, you see it, you know. But I just know things about people's past, their present, sometimes their future. It's whatever their soul needs revealed at that time. I just know it. And I thought everybody did that. And it wasn't until one day I was talking to somebody and, and telling them, well, you know, this is what, what's, you know, has happened in your past, right? And they went, how did you know that? I've never told a soul. And I said, well, you must have, because I, I know all about it. And Darwin went, okay, Karen, you realize that's just freaky, right? <laughs> and I went, I, I, I should say, must have told me about it, but I, started looking at it and started analyzing and it had been that way my whole life I'd had dreams that would come true weird things like you know dropping a pen at a grocery store and having a stranger bump me in the head as we both went to pick it up I mean those kind of weird dreams that yeah why yeah. would you have that dream but and then there were some profound ones so he, he and I as we talked he says you've got these spiritual gifts and a lot of your funk right now is because the universe is changing so much and the energies are changing and the vibrations. And he said, and you're not connected where you need to be. And mm -hmm. that is the universe telling you to pull your act together and start doing what you need to do. And so I went and yeah, is it something that um, is totally disrupts everything mm -hmm. for you to to you are forced to yeah. stop, right? And yeah, and I would, other things come in. Yeah, I, I, if you'd have told me five years earlier, ten years earlier, twenty years earlier, I'd have been at that place. I'd have gone. I know better. There's no way I'd be at that place. I'm the one that helps other people out of that place. I'm not going that place. Yes. Um, but I went to that place. Yeah. And uh, so anyway, I went and stayed with the Satchelons. And uh, there were there are five chief head shamans. Um, and four of them were very against me coming and staying and studying with them. Very against it. First Man. off, I'm a white woman. Yeah. Second off, I'm not a member of the tribe, and it's a very small tribe and dwindling, sadly. And, you know, we're trying to do what we can to keep the people together because the jobs and things take people away. And yes. they, yeah. But, um, so I, Juan, my shaman, he talked him into letting me stay and just seeing what happens. And we picked a few modalities for me to study. And um, I took about five of them and studied them in great depth and really got in touch with myself and with, with the spirit, um, with my soul. And right. with the energy around me and with the really, and it sounds kind of woo-woo, but just in the love in the air, the love from the trees, the love from the animals that run around, the, oh. the love that's just there Before, and yeah. becoming one with it. Yes. 
And so I did that. And in order to, to take my test to be a, uh, a shaman, excuse me one moment, Darwin, the doorbell rang, Darwin, the door. <laughs> my husband, my husband uh, just came back from um, uh, from playing golf. But since I've do this show for so long, he has been trained not to make a sound to come in. Well, he, he never, <laughs> he never ever comes in here. But he put on his headset, his hearing aids, and turned them off um, just to hear the computer and not me because he didn't want to make noise. And the doorbell rang. <laughs> <laughs> And it was going to keep ringing. And I know what it is. And he needs it. <laughs> and it's like. So anyway. And I love him. And you know what? Five years ago, I would have been really, really angry at that that just happened. And now I'm just like, eh, he's an old guy. I'm an old gal. It happens. <laughs> but uh, but this, so, is, this is how we are supposed to be anyway. And when you said that... Um, you really um, understood uh, the environment around you. You know uh, the the intelligence of the of the trees and 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 the plants and the animals and and this this incredibly rich um, communication that's constantly going on, and th that that we are not really taught to uh, to understand or listen to or um or even accept you know that's why yeah. you say it sounds woo it's not i mean this is how it is we are just only waking up to this reality right now yeah. and more and more of us are waking up you know and and this is where we, uh, the world needs to go right well the world needs to go and you know we were there for thousands of years and then I Modern society came in, and by modern, I, you know, I'm talking 1380 um, BC, uh, you know, yeah. way back. But yeah. you look at the indigenous people anywhere in the world, and a lot of them they they live with with the love of the earth and the atmosphere and you know mother nature and and the stars and the moon and the sun and and the water and all of the things that cleanse us and guide us and 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 uh the crystals i mean i i have my crystal singing bowls i just can't imagine meditating without them mm. and you know and there's kind of those kind of things but I did my five modalities with my shaman and passed him with flying colors, mm -hmm. and uh, except for one. He made me do Reiki a second time, and I said, I didn't do it good. And he says, no, it was perfect. I just want it done again. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was funny. Yeah. But because the other four were so adamant that I not be ordained, I had to pass off all five modalities with each one of them individually. Hmm. Oh, oh. And I passed them with each one individually and they had long talks with the translator. Uh, <laughs> they didn't speak Spanish and I don't speak Spanish much either. Um, so we had a gal that spoke their language that speaks Spanish and English. So she could translate <laughs> <laughs> so it was like okay that takes, um, that takes patience as well it, and yeah, well and my learning that's how the learning went is that I it was all done through translation and and I I wasn't able to do a lot of talking I had to do showing and and the movement of energy and and things of that nature but these these other four passed me and they they were so thrilled that I loved their people and what they represent they didn't believe anyone else would appreciate the love of the earth like they do oh. that they actually um 
inducted me into the family. They had a very family ceremony and adopted me in as one of them. It was like an eight hour ceremony with dancing and, and uh, all kinds of things. And so they actually said that I am Satchelon now. Uh, and uh, it's that, that was just, you know, that's an over 45 thing. That's a, yes. actually, that's, that's an over, well, that was, I got ordained when I was 60. That's a 60 thing. Oh, and uh, there you go. So, you know, life doesn't stop just because we turned an age at any age. And, you know, that's I just... Our, that, that's just our way of having been, I, I don't know, we just adapt to certain things that that we are made believe to be so, but they are not so at all. You know, yeah. it's um, but but usually we don't really find that out until later in life that they are not so at all. You know, yeah. leave too much. Um, but there is all of this is shifting, and and there is much more a, a clarity and accepting coming with age, and especially with women's age, because we yeah. are in since two thousand um, twelve. We, we really have shifted into a different um, age that we are in for the next 2000 years. And it's yeah. Aquarius and it's uh, the rise of the female. And it's not only the female, the female, female, but the rise of the female, even in men, that part yeah. of the feminine energy, feminine energy. Yes. Yeah. Which is. And yes, it has about the last 12 years and the last five years, a massive influx of of changing energy uh, globally, and, well, universally, not just within our yeah. within the our yeah. realm, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I, you know, and I'm finding that with with the people I'm coaching, you know, there is people are starting to realize that there's more than what they were raised to think there was, yeah. and that femininity is coming in and men are getting concerned and it's like, why, uh, you know, doesn't make you any less masculine. What it means is that you are more well-rounded. Yes. Actually and enhances their masculinity. Yeah, if they allow, it, it, they allow yeah. it, you know? And uh, so, and it's been fun with my my work being a shaman with the coaching that's really made a big difference because yeah I don't just do incorporate that I, I'm very um you know uh, curious about how does this work in I mean uh, if if you're a coach if you are listening and you're a coach if you say oh my god this sounds strange how can something like this be involved uh, uh, especially coaching Western, you know, this yeah. kind of um, different kind of coaching. And how do you incorporate this incredibly incredible gift into your coaching? You know, it, it's been interesting because of because of the work that I do with the shamans and, and coming to accept my God-given gifts. Yeah. Um, and, you know, there's nothing I did special. It's, it's just a gift that I was given at birth. And... Uh, I I am particular about who I will take on because I want people who want to succeed because mm -hmm. if they don't, they won't. And that's Absolutely. not good for anybody. Yeah. And uh, so I'm, I, we, we talk before we, we do any admit any contract signing, um, but we talk, but I'll do a reading. I'll, I'll read them and I'll know what their soul is really wanting because they'll say, this is what my problem is, but their soul is saying, no, it's not. Kind of like I was with Juan. I'm saying, well, this is what I need. And he's like, no, it's not. Hmm. And uh, so I, I'm doing that, but I get my weekly calls like you do with the coaching. You do your weekly calls. But now I'm putting in two to three hours a week in addition to remote energy work specifically for that person. And mm -hmm. then we do emotion releases for the emotions that their body is ready to release at that time. Mm -hmm. So they're getting all of that extra work. And that all came in with 
becoming a mature adult and bringing in other things, you know, spirituality and, and the shamanism and things. And honestly, I've taken my coaching. I, I work myself out of business. I do a six month program, three months. We meet weekly and I do the other stuff each week. Mm -hmm. um, and then the last three months we meet once, twice a month as an accountability call. And if you have an emergency and I do some energy work, but really the last three months are more just to practice, practice and, and it, it's to practice. And if, if you need, if you need somebody there, I am, but for the most part, they don't need me anymore after three months because I work on one thing and one thing only. Mm. And that's what their soul needs at that time. And uh, so it's been interesting because it's like I work myself out of a job by doing it that way now, but that's okay because I'd rather work myself out of a job and have people going off and finding that purpose their soul's been trying to tell them they needed, but they've been too distracted by life to listen to, yeah, um, and yeah. and to take action toward it. So that has been that has been wonderful. So and uh, we have go ahead. We have a guest in um in the in the waiting room that I would like to um, to bring in uh, in a couple of minutes. Can you just tell us a little bit because then um the recording stops and then we have a private conversation. So yeah, we do that. Can you um share a little bit about the um the upcoming retreat that uh, oh, you? Oh yes, I have a retreat. It's going to be. Awesome. I'm going to have shamans on site the whole time. Um, thing I love about the retreat is it's an energy healing retreat, but I'm going to read the people when they get there so that we know what their soul needs. We've got all the activities and things planned out, but we've got more than we can ever possibly do, but we're going to know what that person's soul needs when they get there so we can then gear the retreat to meet each soul's needs. Oh, that's and great. It's, is that the the um the reason why it's not a three day but it's a it's a whole week right it's a whole week yes we're doing it from the 12th to the 19th of October and we've got workshops we've got downtime it's all inclusive except for airfare so accommodation based on double occupancy all your meals snacks massages yes there's an s on that yoga uh, sound therapy plant medicine um plant baths we're going to have we have drum ceremony that we're going to do i mean there's all kinds of things and the workshops are just phenomenal workshops lined up but we're going to first do the soul reading we're going to do some emotion releases while we're there and um it's Sounds it's amazing. only a small number of people we made it it's a small group that can come and they'll all be there together so there's only 12 people that will be wow. there besides us but you know and, uh, magical number it's uh, a, a beautiful number it's a magical number mm -hmm. but if they go to dr karen perkins dr karen perkins.com slash you, okay can yeah. you want to put it in the chat can you open the chat i will do that mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be great. Because then even for the replay, I can put it into it. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, drkarenperkins.com slash retreat. Oh, okay. And they can find out more about it. And if they want to register, they can register. Or they can go to my website and just go to contact and send me a note and say, hey, I'd be interested in I'd be interested in you doing a five or 10 minute reading with me, which wouldn't be a complete reading, just so yeah, I can get yeah. a taste of what it's like. And I'd be happy. They just need to tell me yeah. they came from you and I'll just give it to them. Oh, beautiful. Thank you. That's such an awesome gift. Now, I understand because I think I looked at it. I think you only have two more spots open, correct? I have got um, two spots for single occupancy, oh. and then I've got and then I've got a couple more spots outside of that. Oh, okay. So All we, right. We held off two rooms so that people they have to pay more for that though. But yeah, I only have a couple of spots left. Yeah, and how much is the is is it? The retreat is forty five hundred because I love you. 
if they type in FM, FNF 500, friends and family 500, I just typed that in. I hope oh. I typed it right. Is that FNF? Uh, <laughs> I put on my glasses. Um, FNF 500, F -F -F. friends and family 500, they'll get $500 off. Okay. And uh, so, beautiful. and I'll know that that came from you as well. Oh, beautiful. Thank you so much. That's awesome. Um, I know I can do this time. When How how often do you plan to do this? Hopefully, at I, least I'm going to do them at least annually. Um, I, I'm really hoping that we can start doing them twice a year, once during the January, February period, and then in uh, September, October. Okay. So um, for the, and it, it's in which country? It's in Ecuador. It's Ecuador. in a very safe place. People are like, it's scary there. No, there are a couple of places that are scary, kind of like, you know, downtown Chicago is scary. Uh, but we're nowhere near there. But it's in Ecuador, and we are in an enclosed uh, facility that you open the front gates onto the beach. Oh, beautiful. and it beautiful. is absolutely stunning and beautiful. And all the rooms have their own restroom in them and, you know, accommodate. They can sleep together in one bed or separate it and have two beds. If if it's a couple coming together, they can share the bed. If not, we separate them into two twin beds. And Right, right. Beautiful. So. beautiful. Wow, this is amazing. Um, and I can imagine that um, this is the first time you do this retreat. This is the first time I've done this particular retreat. Yes, I did retreats for years for corporate America. Right. Not I, the same. Uh, I remember this. Yes, I remember. Yeah. Because I, when we met at the Speaking Empire, and so it was all about corporate, you know. It, yeah. it, it was a totally different um, different vibe. And, and I am so excited for you. Um, I think this is so amazing. Actually, there is so much more I, I would like to know of you and from you. Can we do maybe a second um, session? Um, not. I too would love that. This time, yeah. Yeah. Because I think there is more more to to say. Not, maybe not so much about the retreat, although we can do that too. But more about your work because your work is um, extraordinary and beautiful and yeah. and so important at this time um, in history, <laughs> in our earthly human development. And uh, yes. so that would be amazing. Okay, so um, I am going to, let me see, uh, this all changed a little bit. Um, how do I... I don't want to pause it. I want to stop the recording. And then I want to invite um, our guests from the um, from the back to come into here to ask questions. Okay, so thank you so much. Um, uh, if you have been live here and if you see the uh, recording, isn't this amazing? Isn't this lady absolutely amazing? And precious and um, so apropos for the time that we live in right now. So get in touch with her. And um, I will even more than we have in the past. So thank you so much. And please come back. We have uh, every Saturday, uh, we talk about something that is important and beautiful and um, tell your friends and bring them into these conversations as well. So for now, I love you. Thank you so much for being here and bye-bye for now.